Hey guys, if you are a first year or a second year MBBS student who's looking to do USMLE after you're done with MBBS or even considering USMLE in the future, then this video is for you. This video is exactly the kind of advice that I wish I had received when I just started MBBS and I was considering USMLEs, but I was completely clueless, did not know how do I proceed with exams, what resources should I be using, what should be my timeline and what things other than academics should I be doing to build my CV towards my USMLE journey. So yeah, this video is going to be exactly that. Also, if you're new here, hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Rashi. I am a doctor from India and I'm currently on my USMLE journey to apply to my dream residency of internal medicine in the US. Okay, so I'll give you a brief overview of the process first then I'll go into each of the components and yeah, this is just a starting point. Don't be pressured to do all of it all at the same time. Just go behind whatever feels the most you and whatever you are inclined to and you should be good. So yeah, that said, now let's really get started. If talking about a timeline, then uh, you can give your step one anytime after you are done with your second year. So third minor or third year onwards is the time when you can give step one. Now that also happens to be a very good time to give your step one because the subjects are usually a little bit lighter than third major, like the final year subjects and uh, your first and second year knowledge is still relatively fresh so you will have to spend less time memorizing the same things again because i feel as compared to step two uh, the subjects of step one are a little more uh, memory heavy let's first talk about the academics part if you are in your first or second year i know this is like the most boring advice ever but you have to study really really well your subjects in first and second year will not only form a foundation of you know what you are going to study for your exams no matter what exam but it will also form the foundation of what you're going to do in medicine and i think that is why it's super important to read your standard textbooks and try to understand and grasp concepts really well when you are still in your first and second year because these subjects will form the building blocks of your subjects coming in the later years. Now, coming to what resources you can use in your first and second year to sort of uh, put you in the direction of USMLEs, uh, I'd say Pathoma is a great resource for pathology. It is a book and it also has videos and they've explained things in a lot of detail and they go into the basics of every single thing and i think that is super important because pathology like almost every subject but pathology is tested like in step one step two and step three even in your later exams they're going to give you a clinical scenario and then give you a histopath or a biopsy or just something and then you'll have to you can only answer the question if you know exactly what's the what the path uh, pathology of that disease process looks like and that is why investing your time in Pathoma when you are still in your second year is very, very important. For Pharma and Micro, I would say you can try using Sketchy. Now, Sketchy is basically mnemonics. They paint these weird pictures of things that are a little bit more difficult to remember. And uh, yeah, if you are a visual learner, then this can be of great help. And if you're looking for like videos to learn from, then Boards and Beyonds is again a great resource, something that I have used personally and it was very very nice. They have these bite-sized 15-20 minute videos on all topics from uh, first year and second year, a little bit of biostats and psychiatry. So if you want to like brush up your knowledge and take a little bit more of these concepts in from a more USMLE perspective, then BNB would be great. Uh, it also has a few questions and you can also use their question bank to sort of get started on solving questions. I think it keeps things interesting and you can also test yourself parallelly as you are studying. Uh, about first aid and UWorld, I would say these are primarily exam resources. So they should be used a little bit closer to the exams. So if you plan to give your exam in third minor, then probably start using UWorld six to eight months before you uh, plan to give your exam and same for first aid 
don't use first aid as a textbook it is not a textbook you will not understand anything from first aid uh, it is just an amazing amazing revision book moving on to the next thing your co curriculars now i know when you're just like starting medical school it's sort of overwhelming academically as well and no matter how much you've studied for like our entrance exams and neets first year like medical school is a different ball game i think this is a great time to pick up a new hobby perhaps a new music instrument or take that photography course that you've always wanted to do you do you just have fun with it and i would say invest your free time also wisely into doing something that will you know ultimately enhance your personality and make you a more interesting person uh in things that are not in medicine another thing that you can do to sort of help in this process is volunteer medical colleges all over have all these camps and different activities going on all throughout the year and i think it can be a great way to learn practical skills make new friends and also just give your time back to the community so i think that it's always a great idea to reach out uh to your medical school's administration or your seniors and see what camps are happening and then start volunteering in them early on talking about new skills something that you should also consider getting into is research probably in your second year or so uh don't be afraid of the fact that you don't know anything because everybody's a beginner at some point like reach out to your faculty uh to ask them if they have any projects going on take up a small role and that will give you an insight into much bigger things you'll see how things work uh, what are the skills you'll need and i feel research skills are something that you can sort of learn only by doing um uh, so yeah don't be afraid to re- reach out if you don't ask the answer is always going to be no that that's what i believe in completely for every single thing in life and it applies to to this as well and if you go to a medical college that's not that uh, research heavy or there are not that many opportunities that you can find then you can always take up these online courses and build your skill set first once you've built your skill set you can then reach out to people and work in research remotely and yeah if you want to like go a step ahead Johns Hopkins offers research electives for international medical students so that is also something that you might consider getting into but having a research background prior would be great even for that experience oh and also icmr projects are great and they look amazing on your cv so if you have the opportunity uh, try to do one all right all this can sound a little overwhelming especially if you're hearing about all this for the first time and i know because i've been there but trust me starting somewhere and getting started is the most important part taking up or taking up this career path is a secondary choice but these skill sets and this sort of cv that you'll build in college will definitely help you no matter uh, what path you pick because you you are not going to be in college forever so make use of all the opportunities that are offered to you when you are still in college and when you are still a medical student uh, uh, all the best good luck i hope this was helpful and if you have any more questions on this topic then you can drop it in the comments and i'll try to answer them in a in the next video so bye bye